This is the Mac Studio. Would you spend up to $10,000 on this box? Or would it be worth saving your money and going with an alternative? In this video, we're gonna be talking about the design, ports, specs, and everything you need to know about the Mac Studio. And at the end, I'll be sharing some of my conclusions, so stick around for that. Okay, so let's talk about specs. This particular configuration has the Apple M1 Max chip. The M1 Max is the third in a lineup of four Apple Silicon chips. And then there's also the M1 Ultra, which this computer can configure to. Essentially, it's combining two M1 Max chips together. So this M1 Max has a 10-core CPU, 32-core GPU, and a 16-core neural engine with 64 gigabytes of unified memory and a two terabyte solid state drive. And now moving on to ports. It has two USB-C ports, one SD card slot, four Thunderbolt 4 ports, two USB-A ports, one HDMI port, one 10 gigabyte ethernet port, and one 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. This computer is built for professionals. Specifically for me as a filmmaker, I really appreciate having lots of ports. So the USB-C ports, and USB-A ports, because some of my cords are outdated and they're the USB-A. It's really nice having the headphone jack so I can put my high impedance headphones on, but also just an SD card slot. Like we're constantly filming run and gun content and need to immediately upload that to our computer. This is really nice that Apple's bringing back some of those ports that professionals like I as a filmmaker really appreciate. So the Mac Studio is essentially like two Mac Minis were kind of sandwiched together and it has that seven by seven footprint. It's really nice because it has the fans at the top which will blow cool air throughout all the components. This helps everything work smoothly and the fan noise is actually very, very minimal. Recently I've been working on some really intense video editing tasks. <laughs> My Mac Studio for a lot of intensive video tasks, CPU, GPU needed tasks, and I haven't even heard the fan once. So if it's using the fans at all, it's very, very, very quiet. So this is the brains behind the whole computer, but we also have the face of the computer, which is the studio display. This display is very similar to the old IMAX. It's a 27 inch 5K retina display with 600 nits of brightness, IPS LCD screen, 60 Hertz, E3 color, True Tone technology, and an entire A13 Bionic chip powering everything on the inside. It has a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, which makes it really nice for FaceTime, Zoom calls, and it also has center stage, which means essentially when you're on your Zoom call or your FaceTime, as you're moving around, it's gonna follow your face throughout the room. It has high fidelity six speaker system with force canceling woofers. I love this feature, especially when you're watching movies, listening to music while you're working, or just playing back video through the speakers itself because it's it almost has a sense of surround sound. It's not perfect, but for just a display, it's really cool. It has four three USB-C ports, one of those being a Thunderbolt 3 port. And this particular display has a tilt adjustable stand, so it can tilt forward or backwards. There's also a height and tilt adjustable stand where it can go up and down as well. Just depends on the type of setup that you need for your studio. Now we're gonna move into price. So let's say you wanted just the very base model you could get the M1 Max chip, which would have the 10 core CPU, the 24 core GPU, and the 16 core neural engine. Then you get the baseline of 32 gigabytes of unified memory, which is more than enough for most creators, and 512 gigabytes of storage. This would run you about two grand for the baseline, and that's just for the studio itself. Let's say you wanted to get the studio display, which would be just the standard glass and the tilt adjustable stand, as well as the keyboard and the mouse then you'd be looking around 3,900. If you wanted to completely max out and go ultra mode on this computer, for the M1 Ultra with the 20 core CPU, 64 core GPU, and 32 core neural engine, plus the 128 gigabytes of unified memory and an eight terabyte solid state drive, you'd be looking at around eight grand just for this box. Then if you wanted to include the display with the upgraded nano texture glass, the height and tilt adjustable stand, and the keyboard and mouse, it would be over 10 grand. Is this box really worth that? 
As a filmmaker, it's really important to have the right specs to be able to edit the footage that I'm filming and to be able to deliver to my clients and to people who watch my videos the best possible product. This computer was a computer I was looking forward to for a long time. I had one of the old iMacs, it was like a 2015 iMac. It was getting me by. But when I got my new Sony a7S III, I was now filming 4K footage, 10-bit color, and about 60 to 120 frames per second. These are big, heavy files that I needed a better computer to edit them on. So for the Mac Studio, who is this computer really for? If you're a content creator, if you make YouTube videos, if you're a filmmaker, photographer, graphic design artist, or anything in that realm, this might be really important for you because you need the types of specs and the upgrades that the studio can offer. There's a lot of other great options that Apple has too. There's the Mac Mini, there's the 24 inch iMac, there's the MacBook Pro, even the MacBook Air. It really just depends on how much you need. I don't think you should totally max out this version and I'll explain why. So if you're a video creator looking to upgrade your setup, I would suggest getting the 64 gigabytes of memory I have had no issues scrubbing. The export times are crazy. I would also suggest getting a terabyte to two terabytes of hard drive space. That way you can store some assets on your computer, but then also have your external hard drive space as well. And then when it comes to which chip, the M1 Max is more than enough. So save your money. You don't need the Ultra unless you're doing something CPU and GPU intensive. I have absolutely loved this computer. I waited a long time for a more professional upgraded computer in the Mac lineup, and I'm really grateful that Apple provided this for us. Let me know your thoughts below. Do you have the Mac Studio? Are you working with a different type of Apple computer? or do you use PC? All right guys, that's all I have today for the filmmaker's review of the Mac Studio. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications. And that's all I got for you guys today. Peace out.